Hey guys and welcome to today's video. So I've got another exciting one because we've got a, a new a retro handheld games emulation console in the studio and we're going to be unboxing this today. So this is the Anbunik RG351V and I've seen quite a lot about it and one thing that I really liked is that it comes in the same sort of style as the old classic and coloured Game Boys, so that vertical format. I've also got alongside me the Retroid Pocket 2 as well, so we'll do a couple of sort of size comparisons so you can kind of get an idea of what they're like. So it's not going to be like a full in-depth dive into this thing and its performance, that will be coming in a later video, but we're going to unbox it, see what it's like initially, what it feels like, and just how it looks. So, let's get started, shall we? So, first thing in the unboxing, it also comes with this sort of hard fabric case, which is, it's a nice little touch. Got this sort of elastic bit in there to keep it in, and then this netting. Now, box-wise, very, very simple, just literally a plain white box. A little bit of a description about the device as well, so... Built-in Wi-Fi online sparring. That's, that's new to me. So it is a 1.5 gigahertz quad-core processor, um, comes with a 1 gigabyte of DDR3 RAM, a 64 gig of memory, 3.5 inch display, which is 640 by 480, and it's an IPS display, um, and a 3900 milliamp battery. It does support a memory card as well, which you'd expect for something like this. It just makes getting games on and off this a lot easier. So I have managed to hold off and not unbox this until I actually got to the video, so let's pop it open. Oh, it's got the old sort of Apple dropout. Here we go, so ooh, it's kind of weird foamy bit. Now I opted for the wood finish on this one, so it's like a, a false wood, and that's just because it looked really interesting, but you can pick it up in different colors, so you can pick it up in sort of like the classic retro console colors, and just something that doesn't look quite as unique as the wood. Now included in the box you get a, so a USB Type-C cable to USB Type-A, so obviously handy for charging. Um, screen protector in there, which seems to be kind of classic with these things. And randomly a 64 gig memory card just kicking about in the box, which could very easily go missing. It's not in any sort of plastic or anything else like that. There are some screen wipes as well. And then the sort of like little console booklet, just giving you a bit more information about it. And I guess how to get games and stuff onto the device. Okay, so the bit that I have been eagerly awaiting. Let's pop it open and see what it's actually like. Ooh, it feels quite heavy actually. Straight away that feels a lot heavier than the retro pocket. Yeah, a, a little bit heavier, at least by feel. And ooh, oh I really like that. That See, when I unbox this, I do like the Retro Pocket 2 is a really nice device. Um, it's almost like a mini Nintendo Switch, just obviously being able to play retro games instead. It feels nice in the hand, quite lightweight and quite well, quite well made, but this feels just kind of at first hold really, really solid. Now, that wood finish, obviously that's going to be an acquired taste. Some people are going to love it, some people are going to absolutely hate it. It looks and feels fantastic. Now, on this device, so you have, at the bottom here, you've got the headphone jack. You've also got two USB Type-C ports on the bottom there as well. And I believe one is for data transfer and one is for charging. So, again, that's quite handy to have. It seems a little bit overkill, but I guess if you're going to have it docked or something like that, and you also want to plug it into an external device, then that is there. Um, so it's quite slim on top because you've got the triggers as well, which is just a nice touch. So even though it is this old Game Boy-esque type handheld vertical format. You've also got your triggers just on the inside, and you've got four triggers in total. So you have your L1, L2, and R1 and R2 as well, which is a nice little touch. Now on the front here, we have all of our buttons as well, and there's no funky colors, it's just literally black buttons, and just kind of have a feel. I mean, that D-pad feels pretty solid, and so do you sort of like your A, B, X, and Y buttons. They all have a good, decent click. Now this little analog stick here, again, a nice touch if you're going to be using sort of a more modern emulator. And it has an L2, L3, whatever it is, so it actually clicks in. One thing that I really disliked about the Retro Pocket 2 is the fact there is no L3 button there, which this actually clicks in. So that's nice for certain emulators are going to, you know, benefit from that. You've also then got your select and start, and then, of course, your speaker as well. Like I said, this feels 
really, really nice. And it looks fantastic. The screen actually looks really big. It's a lot bigger than I thought it was going to be. It seems bigger than the Retroid Pocket 2. So let's power it on. Hopefully we've got some charge, because otherwise this is going to come to a very disappointing pause. Oh, one thing I forgot to mention as well. On the sides, you have your power key, um, an R key. I'm assuming it's like a reset button. Uh, memory card slot, which already has a memory card by the looks of things. This must have like the operating system. Yep, so memory card slot there. And then you have a second memory card slot as well. So if you want to have two lots of storage, you can do. And I guess that's, again, is quite handy. You'll be able to kind of hot swap all different games around. So let's power it on. Please have some charge. We have some charge. We have some life in it. Ooh. Ooh, and it has a vibrate function. Either that or it's faulty. <laughs> let's, uh, let's get it going. Okay, so there's a little LED light as well just there to show you. I assume it's working. And Oh, that's a really nice screen. So let's go on to all games. Oh, okay, quite a nice thing here. You can use your D-pad to navigate the menus or you can use your analog stick, whichever one you want to do. So. It's not going to be a massive thing that most people are looking for, but it's just nice to know. It's sometimes frustrating when certain kind of navigation keys just get disabled when you're in a different menu for whatever reason. So have we got anything on here already that we can kind of have a play with? Let's have a look. Okay, so we'll just load up something like uh, one of the Pokemon games for Game Boy Color, just to kind of give you an idea of how this thing looks when it's in this, I guess, native Game Boy format. There we go, so that is a Pokemon Crystal running. Now, so you can use your D-pad on this, and then you can use your, your little joystick. Now, one thing that was really confusing me when I first started playing this, just to kind of get an idea of it before shooting this part of the video, is you've got this function key just here, so if you want to be able to do additional things, you can hold that down, for example, and then pressing your L2 will speed up the game. Then you've got the option to load a game save or make a game save. You can have your frames per second as well on there. But if you want to get out of this and go home or load up your settings, it's your L3 and your function key as well. And here you've got different options for the emulator that you're currently using, the ability to obviously start recording, streaming, go home, rewind, all of that is in there as well. So you can fidget about your heart's content. Like I said, I kind of got stuck when I first did it and I had no idea how to get out of the emulator. Now, in terms of performance, it looks great, it feels great, and again, on this sort of screen size, it just absolutely comes to life. This is when Pokemon on a Retroid handheld console is absolutely amazing. That Retroid Pocket 2 was great, but this just, it feels just really right. <laughs> right, let's load up something else. Here we go, so we'll play a little bit of Nintendo 64 just to give you an idea of how this runs. Now, normally in my experience, the N64 emulators don't tend to run particularly well on these sort of machines, but it's always a little bit playable and it's just a little bit of fun. So here we go, a bit of a Mario Kart. Okay, if I get the frames per second in the top there as well, so you'll be able to see that and just kind of get a general idea as to how this is running and see this is with no tinkering I've not played around with the settings or anything at all so don't even know how to play this game how do I go oh there we go oh so actually surprisingly playable so when we played on the Retroid Pocket 2 it was a bit of a mess there was a lot of stuttering when it came to oops uh, when it came to uh, the N64, but this, and I know obviously this is literally just one game and there's going to be other things for us to try as well, but actually it's keeping a pretty solid 60 frames per second and it's very playable. This screen really suits this type of gameplay and I, I, I didn't really know what to expect when I ordered this and I just figured it might be a little bit weird compared to something like the, uh, the Retro Pocket 2, but actually... I am really impressed with how this looks and how good quality this screen looks. And the buttons, I think, it just feels so good to hold. Like I said, N64, so far, so good. And we'll do more in-depth sort of testing of it later on. Right here, okay, so we will boot something else up just to kind of get an idea. So we've seen Game Boy Color. Let's 
So let's try out a bit of Sonic the Hedgehog on the Mega Drive because, of course, why wouldn't you? And then we will skip on to something like the PlayStation 1 just to get an idea of how that looks and how it runs on this sort of device as well. Ah, having flashbacks to my childhood right now. And again, running pretty much as I'd expected. I didn't have any doubts that something like the Mega Drive wouldn't run well, but now nah, this looks great. And it, this screen, again, just really suits it surprisingly well. Oh, almost. Oh, and there we go. We have ourselves some, uh, some sparkly stars. So Mega Drive, as expected, looks great, works great. No sort of frames per second drops or anything like that. It's very, very smooth footage. And again, this screen just suits it so incredibly well. So let's try something a bit more demanding like the PlayStation. Okay, and to demonstrate the PlayStation, I've loaded up a little bit of Tomb Raider. Just again, to give an idea of what this looks like. With something maybe slightly more demanding than what we've played so far. Okay, I'll just get that frames per second counter on the top there. So again, things are running really smoothly. You would expect it to do so just because... It's an older game, an older platform and all of that, but it's just nice to see it all working on there. So PlayStation pretty much so far working without a hitch. Oh, almost got... Oh, look at me dodge. I haven't been doing anything and I'm passing all of those. So obviously, yep, yeah, it looks old school because it is old school. But the game is running perfectly fine. And so far, initial impressions of that look great. We'll just have to have a... Ooh. So we'll just have to have a, a deeper dive into it at a future date. Okay, so one last one I want to test, and that is the Dreamcast emulator whilst we're here. There are things like, so we do have the Nintendo DS built into it, and we also have a PSP emulator as well, but they're probably going to require a little bit more tinkering just to get used to. So due to the limitations of the time I've got at the moment with the unboxing of this, we'll save things like the DS and the PSP emulation for the actual full review, and I'll let you know how those perform at a later date. Okay, so Sonic Adventure, let's boot that up on the Dreamcast and see how that runs. It's a relatively tricky title, and a lot of things tend to have a lot of frame skips when it comes to Sonic Adventure. The Retro Pocket 2, although it could play it, again, it was one of those devices that just had a lot of frame skips and dropped frames and stuff like that, so... I'll be interested to see how this works uh, just in the initial stages compared to something like the Retroid Pocket 2. Okay, here we go. So I'll just get the frame, oh, just get the frame per second counter on there as well so you can have a look at that. I mean, it's keeping a, a solid 30 frames per second. It looks pretty good to be fair. I have no idea what I'm doing on this one. This is the, the second game. I think I've only played the first one. Okay, so we've got a bit of a drop then. But it's definitely playable. The audio is a little bit choppy, but for the most part, it's not too bad. It's not massively out of sync. And actually, it looks pretty good. Well, there we go, so we drop down to 20 frames per second there. So definitely a playable experience. Be interesting to see how it works on other titles as well. Oh, here we go. Move around a little bit more. Okay, yeah, very playable experience. There are a few slowdowns where things are stuttering just a little bit, and the audio, like I said, is a little bit stuttering in places, but for the most part, this looks good, and it's definitely a playable experience. The Dreamcast, first impressions are good. They're about in line with the Retroid Pocket 2, so I guess what I'd expect from this sort of device. So honestly, first impressions of this are absolutely awesome. It feels really, really comfortable. It's very, very sturdy. It's, it feels relatively weighty compared to something like the Retroid Pocket 2, but it just feels so sturdy and well-made, and that screen is absolutely gorgeous it's a really big big screen it's bright it's vivid there's a lot of detail in there 
Um, it looks a lot better than I expected it to, and it's a hell of a lot more comfortable to hold than I expected it to. Something like the Game Boy, for example, because you it's kind of small and cramped and there's not really anywhere for your fingers to go. But on this, because of the way it's made and it's slimmer at the top and then you can rest your fingers there, it's just really easy to navigate and really easy to use. I only had a very brief chance to play some of the games on it. And this one did come preloaded with games already on the memory card, so your mileage may vary and you might have to get your own games and your own ROMs and everything else like that. So first impressions of it is, again, it's pretty good for what I expected it for. So things like Game Boy Color, a little bit of Nintendo DS as well. There wasn't really too much stuttering there and it definitely looks like it's going to be great for those old handheld consoles. Operating system's really nice to use, literally just boots up and then kind of search for your games and play from there. So really impressed with it so far and definitely first hands-on impressions of this. It seems to be a little bit easier to get to grips with than something like the Retroid Pocket 2 was. You know, you don't have to mess around with any Android or installing other operating systems or kind of figuring out how this works. It feels a lot more comfortable to hold and by far my favourite vertical console I've played in a very, very long time. This feels solid and looks absolutely amazing. And like I said, that it just feels so good in the hand. So make sure you hit subscribe because we will be doing a more in-depth review of this in the future as well, once we've had some actual time to play with it. We'll assess how it works and how the emulation is. So by the end of this, we're gonna do a comparison between these two devices. We're gonna see if we're gonna keep the Retroid Pocket 2 or we're gonna be keeping the RG351V. So far, I'm leaning towards this, even though I've had barely any time to play with it. So, hope you enjoyed that video. If you've got any questions you want us to answer, by all means, throw them down into the comments below, and I'll do my best to dive deep into this, figure it out for you, and let you know our answers. In the meantime, stay safe, and we'll see you soon with some more awesome content. Bye.